This is Dr. Ali Magabal and welcome again to Single Sideband Modulation. This is part 6 of Amplitude Modulation. In this lecture, we'd like to go over the following objectives. We'll give you a quick introduction about what single sideband is, time domain representation, and frequency domain representation of single sideband. We will have to go over Hilbert transform to, to understand how to get the expression for single sideband, so we'll do so. And in, in the second part, in part two, we'll look at the generation of uh, single sideband using selective filtering or phase shifting. And we'll look at uh, the demodulation of single sideband using coherent or non-coherent detection. So let's start with part one here at the top uh, in this video. Single sideband modulation. You can see here the time domain, the frequency domain representation of the spectrum of the message. We have the red and the blue part. In fact, they are similar thing. I'm just showing the colors for illustration. On this side, we have just one single side of the spectrum. While we here, we have the other side of the spectrum. So the question we are asking, in double sideband subrest carrier, as well as in, in full AM, the modulated signal occupies double the bandwidth of the baseband signal, although the two sides carry the same information. So is there a way we can get rid of this and get only one single sideband? To improve the, the bandwidth efficiency, we went into QAM, quadrature amplitude modulation. But the problem with QAM, it's true that it can send two signals at the bandwidth of 2B, which means 1B per message. Uh, the problem, it requires co-located M1 and M2. They have to be at the same location and they are very phase sensitive. Now, why not only send one side, the upper side or the lower side? And then we have what we call single sideband, upper sideband or lower sideband. We'll see that it's possible. And the modulation technique it will be very similar to double sideband subrest carrier. Only we'll have to change the setting of the filters, as we're going to see. We'll change the center frequency and bandwidth. Similarly, at the receiver side, we'll have similar coherent detection, like in double sideband suppressed carrier. We can do non-coherent, but we'll see more details as we go on. For now, we have defined what single sideband is, and we'll explore more what it means in time and frequency. In this figure, you can see that we start at the top with the message spectrum. This is the double sideband suppressed carrier. It requires double the original bandwidth. We have upper sideband and lower sideband. Now, if you can find a way to send only this part, the part of the spectrum that's above the carrier frequency is called the upper sideband. While the part of the spectrum that's below the lower uh, the carrier frequency is called lower sideband. So we have two possibilities for single sideband, either USB or LSB. Now, how would we represent this in single sideband? I know that to go from here to here, all I have is to multiply by cosine. Take the message, multiply by cosine, and you get what you want. So if this is a message, M of T in time, this spectrum, we can get it by M of T times cosine omega CT. Now the question, how do we get this spectrum? What is the mathematical representation of this so we can implement this in the lab? How would we represent the single sideband signal in time domain? And to do this, we will need to go over some math. So you have to be patient until we finish, and then the conclusion will be relatively simple. So the question is, what is USB? What is upper sideband, single sideband in time? And what is lower sideband in time? So let's go into this uh, derivation issue. Uh, in the following slide, we have two slides to follow. Time domain representation of single sideband. We'll start with this signal. Okay, at the top, this is M plus, or this is the message M, M of omega and frequency. And what you see here is what we call the positive part of the spectrum. So this is nothing but M plus, okay? As function of omega or as a function of F, if you like. It's the same thing here. So we have this part is the negative part of the spectrum. So we can say that the spectrum at the top 
is equal to the sum. I'm using the same color in the writing to help you to trace. So it's equal to the positive envelope or the positive part of the spectrum and the negative part of the spectrum. So the first equation is straightforward. Now, we will find, we'll assume that this signal or this spectrum have in the time domain an equivalent small m plus. So this is the time domain Fourier transform, if you like, inverse Fourier transform of the spectrum. We want to know what is the message that's going to give you half the spectrum. We'll do the same for the negative part. So now we can say the message would be the sum of the two because the sum of the two give you the spectrum of the message. So again, time and frequency are very transformed of each other. So you expect if you add these two signals, if you add these two, you get m of t. I'm showing the spectrum, but of course, time and frequency are just representation. Now, we did this by linearity. Now, because uh, those spectrums, those two spectrums are not even spectrum, so you can tell that they are coming from an unrealistic message because we learned when we covered free transform that the spectrum of any real signal is going to be even magnitude, even spectrum. We have complex conjugate symmetry. So automatically we can tell that M plus and M minus are complex. They're going to be complex. They have to be complex because there is no real signal that has an uneven spectrum. Now, we know that they are complex and their sum equal to a real. So they must be complex conjugate. So we can represent this part of the signal, okay, in time, to have a real part and imaginary part. Similarly, the negative message will have a real part and the negative and, and imaginary part. You know that the imaginary part has to cancel, so they must be complex conjugate. We'll call this negative imaginary part, we'll call it M sub H, for a reason that's going to become lit, clear later on. And if you add the real part, this should add up to M of T. So every one of them will have half M of T. Now, what is this M of H? Our original question was, what is the single side band? And then we ask the question of, what is this signal that gives you only, only part of the spectrum? And now we are asking the question of, what is this complex part of this signal? And then we will go backwards. So now let's focus. We know that this signal has a real and imaginary part. What is this imaginary part of this signal? Okay. To find the imaginary part, we'll continue here with the derivation. So I am repeating uh, that the, the message, the spectrum of the signal is based on a sum of two things, positive and negative envelopes. And now you can see that we can write the positive part of the spectrum as n times u of h u of f, right? Because u is the step function. So if you recall, if we had the spectrum, right? This is a triangle. And you multiply by the unit step function, but in frequency domain, this is going to be multiplied by zero and you just get uh, the positive parts. So hence, we're writing here that the positive envelope equal to the spectrum, the positive spectrum equal to the spectrum multiplied by u of f. Remember that our, our variable here is frequency. Similarly, if we multiply by u of minus f, we can get the negative part. So if you multiply by uh, u of minus f, which is this one, the positive will cancel out. So all we have done is just we have rewritten the positive and the negative part of the spectrum. We can also write this in terms of signum for a reason that's going to become clear. What's signum? If you don't recall signum, if this is the x and y axis, the signum function look like this. Okay, it's positive, one, and minus one here. So we can write signum in terms of unit step function. Signum equal to two times u of f, signum as function of frequency, equal to two times u of f minus one. You can solve for u of f from this equation to here. u of f will be one half plus one half signum of f. We can also do the same for u of minus f. So we get a minus sign here instead. Okay, fantastic. Now, we will take these green things and substitute them here. Okay, so we're going to substitute this thing back. So we'll get m plus equal to one half into mf plus mf times signum. I got this here and I'm getting this expression. 
I can do the same for the negative part. So you take everything here in green and substitute. We got these two expressions. Now, you might still remember what we have done in the previous slide. Comparing this with the previous slide, okay, uh, in our previous slide, we have seen that we have m of t plus jm of h. Okay. So in frequency domain, okay, this is going to be translated into one half to mf plus jm of f. If you compare these now to, if you compare them, this term is the same. So mf times sigma of f is equal to jmh of f. So if you equate these two together, okay, or equate the negative parts together, you will find out that mh is nothing but minus jmf times sigma f. What does that mean? This is going to become clear later on. But mathematically, we came to a conclusion that if you take the message, multiply it minus j message spectrum, multiply it by minus j, and then multiply by sigma of f, you get the imaginary part that's required to get half the spectrum. Again, for us, it's just a mathematical development here, and we'll make the physics clear later on. So we can also say that mh in time is the inverse Fourier transform of capital M of h. By the way, the, the subscript h here is intentional because this operation, taking the message and multiplying it by minus j signal, is very well known for mathematicians, and this is called the helper transform. So h stands for helper transform. We'll spend some time with the helper transform. What's helper transform? We just say that in helper transform, you take your spectrum and multiply my, by minus j. So mh is known as the helper transform of m of t. The transfer function of the system that give you the help transform, the system that takes m as input, okay, in time, or if you like capital M in frequency, and give you at the output, and give you at the output here, m h of f. This is the, this is has a transfer function. The transfer function of the system is shown here. Okay. So the transfer function of this system is minus j times sigma. Let's try to sketch this. What's minus j? j is a 90 degree. What's mi minus? Sigma is, we know, it's, it's positive 1 or minus 1. So in fact, what we get is either minus j or plus j. And I'm sketching the entire tra transfer function. So sigma has an amplitude of 1. So we get minus j here, we get plus j. So this is the representation of this minus j signal. To be more explicit, we'll split this into magnitude and phase. The magnitude is always 1, and the phase is either minus pi over 2 or 90 degree here. And, of course, the phase has always to be odd, and the magnitude has always to be even. To summarize, what we have done, a helper transform does not change the magnitude. It's an ideal, ideal phase shifter by 90 degrees. So it delays things by 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees. So we have the following transfer function to represent the helper transform. Looking at the, at the frequency domain expression is this. We'll look at the time domain expression. But it's basically, to make things simple, it's a pi over 2 phase delay. OK, so let's proceed more and we get back to our slides uh, that we're just here like a detour. Now. Let's look at uh, an example of helper transform to make things a bit simple. What's the helper transform of cosine signal? We'll do things in frequency. So using full transform tables, the full transform of a cosine is the following signal, half delta two deltas. Now, if you want to find the helper transform, we represent this by HT, helper transform, and then we have bracket. Okay, as if you are multiplying minus J signal by the frequency because in frequency we multiply okay how do we go from here to here i just got the minus sign inside now how do we go to the next step then how do you go from here to here that's a, a bit uh, tricky because signum if you recall signum is positive one or negative one right so for positive frequencies, anything on the right-hand side of the spectrum will be multiplied by j. Anything on the left-hand side will be multiplied by minus j. If you notice these two deltas, this is shift left. So it's going to be multiplied 
by minus so it becomes positive however this thing is shifted to the right so it's going to stay as is with its sign and we got rid of the sign of the signal so the sign function or the signal it did its job and now it disappeared but if you notice here what is this full transform of what if you do the inverse full transform you'll find that this is nothing but a sine function and this was expected in fact because cosine has a Hilbert transform which is sine cosine delayed by 90 degree give you a sign so that's something to be expected now we can ask simple questions here or, or uh, if you like uh, if we if we take a signal through a Hilbert transform HT and then through another Hilbert transform so what's x of t what will be the output so Hilbert transform is 90 degree another Hilbert transform is 90 degree you get at the output here minus x of t so two Hilbert transform in cascade become very simple and of course if you want to think about uh, four if you have four Hilbert transform in cascade you get the same signal x of t at the input and the output because delaying 90 degrees four times is delaying by uh, 360 degrees which is multiplying by one so this is expected because delaying 90 uh, by, uh, cosine by 90 degree is a sine function now just to complete the picture I'd like to show you the time domain operations of the Hilbert transform. We're just asking ourselves, what is the meaning of Hilbert transform in time domain? In fact, the meaning of Hilbert transform in time domain, we do need to do the inverse Fourier transform. So using the tables from Fourier transform tables, you will find signum to have the following um, uh, Fourier transform. So we need to use dual duality uh, to flip things or symmetry. We need to have a minus sign there. The two cancel with the two. And now we find out that uh, you find out that we can multiply both sides by j and we get the following uh, expression we get you know that signum is an odd function so this minus can go outside at the end of the day we can show that uh, the inverse for transform of minus j signum is one over by t that's to say you can find the full trans you can find the Hilbert transform in time or equivalently in frequency so if you want to do it in time then it's going to be convolution with 1 over by t why 1 over by t because the inverse Fourier transform the impulse response of the system turns out to be 1 over by t you can always do the convolution it's not always easy but just to complete the picture since we have seen the time the frequency domain we're showing you how things look in the time domain Finally, finally, we did not finish now. We're going back to our original problem. Remember we said the upper side band here is this uh, this guy is made of the first spectrum, this signal at the top, shifted to the right and this one shifted to the left. So we can write M plus shifted and then minus shifted. Okay, this shift operation in time is scaling is multiplying by a complex uh, exponential. We already have found m plus and m minus so what we're going to do is just substitute for them so you can see you can trace the color so m plus is made of one half m plus one half uh, m mh similarly the negative part here is going to be the same and uh, now you can see that if you try to simplify the operation we get here uh, cosine and sine so if you collect the similar term m plus m one half half two exponentials you get cosine if you add these two terms you get a sine so basically the signal that has upper side band is made of the message multiplied or modulated by cosine which is nothing but the double side band and then we take from it we subtract from it mh which is uh, modulated by sine which is the helper transform we can also do the same for the lower side band the only difference is we'll have a minus sign so when we want the lower side band, you do the opposite. You take this to the right and this one to the left. So the, the exponent power will be different. The sign of the power will be different. And if you continue, you'll find that the lower side band has the similar expression except for the minus sign. So I am combining them. And that's the conclusion. That's the expression that you need to remember. 
you can go back to derivation slowly if you like uh, it might take you one or two times to, to revise but for us to continue with, with, with the course with the solving problems we find out the time domain expression needed we find out we found out that the single sideband has two formats it's like double sideband but this term which is mh time sign will take care of removing half the bandwidth and I am keeping usually we write plus minus I am keeping it minus plus so that you don't forget so because the upper side band the upper one is a minus sign while the lower side band is the plus sign so remember it like this minus at the top and plus at the bottom so this is for upper side band here USB and this one for lower side band once more please remember this expression 